Hi, I'm Claire from Wild Ginger Running, the trail and ultra running advice and inspiration YouTube channel. Last September, I was at the finale of the Golden Trails World Series at the Skyline Scotland, and I asked some of the top international athletes like Max King and Debbie Martin Consani, what is the best ultra running tip that they have ever been given? What's the best run ultra running tip someone has given you? Mine is from Emily Forsberg, who says to slow down if you're not enjoying it, and then once you're enjoying running again, you will naturally speed up. Isn't it genius? So comment below to join the discussion on that. Remember to like this film and also take a look at my Patreon page for monthly competitions and also perks from Wild Ginger Running YouTube channel. And enjoy the ultra running tips from these top athletes. This film is powered by Ellis Brigham. Their new trail running range is now available in 24 stores nationwide or shop online at ellis-brigham.com. With long run, it's nice to explore. I think it's good to like find a map and see, find out where you don't have been uh, or where you haven't been for a long time and then trying to check out different areas. That's a cool thing. Smile through the sucky bits. <laughs> yeah, smiling really helps to make you feel better and like pep you up a little bit when you feel so yuck. Um, that's definitely something that's helped me and then also on races to thank every volunteer and greet everyone you see on course and really just like try and be known to be the most wonderful person on the course my best tip to anyone which i use all the time is you don't know until you try i use this frequently in races or anything that i'm doing and i'm not quite sure if i'm nervous about something or if something is going wrong in a race or if, you know you've hit a really bad patch and you want to stop or you want to reassess your goals and I always just keep saying to myself you don't know until you try and it's never let me down. My wife she always tells me that, that I have to listen to myself and she, I, I can trust my instinct and uh, yeah I'm so grateful for that because well she coaches me and uh, and she knows me by heart yes trust in just doing the best I can do on that day it will be good enough or like I can't do more and if I'm on the start line thinking that, then most probably I will get the, the best race with the shape I'm in. Of course, like you can practice eating and drinking for like the, especially if you're thinking about doing longer races. I know it sounds really simple and really obvious, but it's amazing how many people don't do this. It's just, just eat. <laughs> like, I think people have the intention of eating loads, but eat regularly and even if you don't feel like eating and just just eat and eat it makes such a massive difference i didn't used to eat properly on runs i would like oh i'm starting to feel hungry now i'll have a bit now but if you eat like clockwork it it just i just find it really helps because there's always things that are going to go wrong or not go to plan but one and you can't there's loads of stuff you can't control but you can pretty much control your energy levels if you keep regularly putting food in it's quite simple Really being methodical about your nutrition, working out what's right for you. Don't fall for, you know, someone selling this product, this is the best sports drink, and it might be the best sports drink for them, but it's not for you. So it's, try, it's trying all that stuff out and learning about what suits you. It depends. So if, it's, if it was like a super long one, so say it was like 100 miles, I might eat a smaller amount, maybe like every 40, 45 minutes or something. But if it was a faster race, I might eat like every half an hour um, and more sugary stuff. Um, so but I certainly wouldn't leave it more than an hour before eating something. For long distance, like I think the thing that I've learned over my career and stuff and that plays the biggest role in like racing successfully or completing a race successfully is that nutrition piece. And so I've had a lot of good nutrition advice from a lot of different people, um, but asking people like getting their advice, um, especially if you're just starting out and stuff is really important. Ask the veterans, ask the people who kind of nail that piece of it um, and then try different things to see what works for yourself. For me, it's more about the enjoyment than like being outside with guys, enjoying to be training with them and uh, also like race with them. It's not about really advice. And then of course, drinking and eating sometimes it helps if you hear what other people are taking on a race like that, or which gears they are packing in their bag. Um, of course, this helps as well. Pace yourself, without a doubt. Yeah, it's and it's different for every race. 
and marathons will be different to ultras that will be different to off-road marathons but at the end of the day you've got to run for three four five six hours whatever so yeah it's you've got to pace yourself um and you can look at girls and guys who may have set off a bit too quick today and they won't be there at the end of the race and the finishing line is where the result is it's not halfway around it's not at the top of the last hill you never know what might happen to you or somebody else that's in front of you so yeah you run all the way to the finishing line i have to say everything i've ever learnt about long distance running is probably from nikki spinks um because we're in the same club and i think the main thing is do your own do your own race your own pace don't um I know it's funny we were just talking to some of the guys and a lot of men get overly competitive at the start they race off and blow up so just staying staying within the running in the rate that you know that you can sustain for a long time and having a, just a bit of tunnel vision not to get carried away it's good to be competitive and save that competitive bit to the you know for the long race like tomorrow you know if you've got if say you've got three hours to go and you're feeling good step it up then but if you it's so easy to blow up Somebody once said to me uh, about the importance of like running really slowly down the hills. And I guess coming from more of a fell running background and mostly doing kind of up down fell races, that's, that was principally kind of the, the sort of running that I did when I first started. Um, and probably what I'm better at, I guess. I'm definitely not really an ultra runner. Um, I love the descending. Descending is kind of my thing. So I get to the top of this like steep rocky slope and I'm like, whoa, I love this. Um, and I've, I've really had to teach myself to be like, okay, try not to enjoy this, just mooch along, super, super efficient, super steady, don't want to like spend any more energy than I have to. I mean, I, I haven't run that long, I've only done it 100k, so, but I mean, for, for me, it'd be probably pacing, um, and not over, overdoing it straight away. You know, you've got to give your time, time to sort of warm into it, and you know, if you can, get faster at the end, um, but yeah.